This story comes from a series of books entitled Short and Shivery, a collection of old haunting folk tales gathered into a collection of books by Robert D. Sans Souci. If any of you are familiar with the books Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, then these books are very similar to those. Much like Alvin Schwartz, Susie gathers tales of old from different countries around the world and resurrects the horror embedded within them through print. I will be reading this story, and hopefully many others, straight from the pages. If any of you guys would like your very own physical copy of this book in particular, it can be purchased through Amazon, which you can find in the link below. Now, gather around for a shiver. This story comes from Ireland, and is part of an ancient superstition. Variations of these accounts were written by Lady Wilde, and would later be compiled into ancient legends of Ireland. This story is called The Dancing Dead of Shark Island. Just off the coast of Ireland lies the island that the locals call Shark Island though its proper name is Any Shark. One November night, Kathleen O'Connor, a young woman, trudged warily along the road. She had been visiting a sickly relative and was now heading home. But the road was steep and rocky. She grew so tired that she sat down to rest. She shivered with more than the chill night air, for it was now the dread time that the islanders called the Hour of the Dead. She drew her shawl around her and closed her eyes for just a moment. Then the sound of crunching gravel woke her. Instantly she opened her eyes and pressed her hand to her mouth to stop a startled cry. A pale young man was approaching her, though she could have sworn that the moonlit road had stretched empty before her when she had paused to rest only moments earlier. Don't be afraid, he said. His voice was gentle and his face was kind, though he seemed very sad. Indeed, said Kathleen, there is something familiar about you. Look well at me, he answered, coming a step closer. Now do you know me? Yes, I, I know you now, she said, her voice dying away to a frightened whisper. You are young Brian, who was drowned last year when out fishing. Why are you here? Look, he said, pointing to the side of a nearby hill. That is why I have come. Kathleen looked and saw a great company dancing to the sweet music of unseen pipes and drums. So graceful were their movements that they seemed to step and bow and spin as daintily as butterflies darting over blossoms. The sight chilled her to the bone, for among those who danced so beautifully, she recognized all the people who had died on the island for as long as she could remember. Men, women, and children were clothed in white, and their faces were as pale as bone in the moonlight. So intent were they on the fairy music that they did not seem to notice the young woman who watched their revels in fascination and fright. But when the music stopped, all the ghastly faces turned towards her. They raised bone-white hands, beckoning her to join them. They drifted toward her, stretching out their fingers as though they would take hold of her and drag her onto the hillside. Run for your life, warned Brian's ghost. If they bring you into the dance, you will never leave this company again. Terrified for her soul, Kathleen turned to flee. But at that moment, the hidden musicians again began to play. The unearthly music froze the unfortunate young woman where she stood, trembling, as the smiling dancers gathered around her in a circle. Brian himself, a thrall to the music, joined his hands with those of the other dancers. Around and around Kathleen, they danced. The fairy musicians played madly. The ghosts spun faster and faster until they became a blur of whirling white, in which she could no longer make out faces and forms. Faster and still faster they swept around her, It made Kathleen dizzy to watch. The drums and pipes filled her ears and head with a frenzied throbbing. Her senses began to swirl. She grew faint. All at once she fell to the ground, unconscious. She knew no more till she woke up the next morning in her own bed. Her brother Kevin, anxious when she did not return, had gone out searching for her, found her in a faint, and brought her home. But there was a weakness and a forgetfulness in her, so that she could not tell what had happened. The herb doctor was sent for, and he tried every measure he could to save her. But in the end, he shook his head and whispered to Kevin, 
She has got the fairy stroke, and nothing can heal her. Indeed, though Kevin kept watch and prayed by Kathleen's bed, she grew steadily weaker. Just as the moon rose that night, she turned her head a bit, as though listening. Do you not hear it? She asked. Anxiously, her brother listened. Sure enough, now he could hear soft music, infinitely sweet, unbearably sad, all around the house. When he stepped to the window to see who the musicians were, he saw nothing but the moonlit meadow behind the house. The music stopped. There was a sigh from the bed. Then silence. When he returned to Kathleen's bedside, Kevin found that she was dead. Outside, the ghostly musicians struck up a mocking, lively tune. Mad with grief, Kevin flung himself out the door. In the distance, for an instant, he saw Kathleen dancing away from their cottage toward the moonbright hills. She paused briefly to wave her pale hand at him. Then she faded from his view as the music died away into silence. Thank you all so much for listening to tonight's story. If you'd like to hear more, feel free to subscribe. If there's a horror story that you'd like me to narrate, feel free to email me at catacomblibrary at gmail.com. You can also follow me on social media using the links below, and if you'd like to donate to my Patreon, you can do that as well. I have exclusive content for those who do, and you will be financially supporting this channel, which I'll be very thankful for. For now, your visit to the catacombs has ended. Stay safe out there.